Despite Everton's recent loss to Aston Villa, there were some seeds of hope. In the first half, they had no shots to Aston Villa 7, but in the second half, whether it was because they had to come out or because Duncan Ferguson told them to, they amassed 15 shots, an infinite amount more than they'd managed in the first half. One of the key reasons for that increase was the introduction of Anthony Gordon. 55 minutes into proceedings, the 20-year-old was introduced to the Goodison turf. He was a true catalyst that drove Everton forward at every attempt. Despite only entering the field for about 35 minutes, Gordon created more chances, attempted more crosses and made more passes into the opposition box than any other player. The match encapsulated Everton's season so far, uninspiring and lateral. The reign of Rafa Benitez has created a paradoxical mix of despair and apathy. The one spark is the hope that Gordon has provided Everton fans with, like a blue phoenix rising from the ashes of the ruins of Benitez's Goodison reign. So far this season, Gordon has been competing on the right-hand side with fellow winger Andros Townsend. On the wing, the 20-year-old is a willing runner who stretches the opposition fullback. He only ranks in the 61st percentile for Premier League wingers for progressive carrying distance. Even still, he's only second in the entire Everton team for this metric behind Damari Gray. Interestingly, Gordon ranks in just the 31st percentile for Premier League wingers in progressive carries per 90. This indicates that Gordon carries the ball little, but when he does carry the ball, he's capable of lung-bursting runs to drag his team up the pitch. This is down to two factors. Firstly, because Gordon is a young player with little Premier League experience. Towards the start of the season, he passed the ball laterally or backwards, rather than carrying the ball forwards. Secondly, it's difficult to pick out one player from the Benitez reign when the entire team was more focused on defence rather than attack. Against Aston Villa, we saw the varied arsenal of Gordon's crossing ability. He chipped a floated ball that Richarlison headed over. He put in a deep curling corner that nearly ended up in Godfrey scoring. But most impressively was his quick one-two before a whipped ball on the run straight into the path of Calvert-Lewin, only for the striker to complete the hat-trick of misses. Gordon relies on crossing to be his main avenue of chance creation. He completes 0.59 crosses into the penalty area per 90, a figure in the top 16% of Premier League wingers. For all the good work that the Englishman does at crossing the ball, there's still room for improvement in his combination play. Currently, Gordon is only completing 22 passes per 90, along with just 1.28 passes into the final third. These metrics place him in the bottom third for passing ability out of Premier League wingers. Whether it's because of his effusive style of play or maybe a lack of experience in top flight football, Gordon is not yet capable of creating chances purely off passing combinations. Maybe passing with greater tempo and rhythm and confidence would increase the array of threats that Gordon can offer Everton off the flank. Gordon grabbed both of his goals of the season in Everton's 3-2 defeat against Brighton. The first was down to him willing to cut inside and offer different avenues to running down the right flank, and the second came from him taking intelligent attacking positions in the centre of the box. He's only managing 3.64 touches into the opposition box this season, fortunately working under Frank Lampard, one of the Premier League's great late arrivers into the penalty box will only help young Gordon to increase his chances of scoring goals. Being a local lad it's unsurprising that Gordon is a kind of blood and thunder player that the Goodison Park crowd crave. Since the exit of David Moyes the Toffees have been infected by something of a soft touch. Fortunately that's not the case under Gordon. Despite his age and slight frame the Englishman is more than happy to get stuck in. In fact, it's something that he relishes. He's won 1.47 tackles, 2.36 blocks and 1.77 interceptions per 90. These figures make him one of the league's best tackling wingers. Presumably, that's part of the reason that he was so successful under Benitez, but these are invaluable assets under any manager for any team. Since Everton's defeat to Aston Villa, there's been a mini transformation at Goodison Park. Firstly, the managerial change, which has seen Lampard enter the fray. 
This shouldn't affect Gordon too much as Lampard's grown a reputation for giving young players a chance, such as Mason Mount for Kai Tomorrow and Rhys James. The expectation is that Lampard will have a similar view on Everton's youngsters, such as Lewis Dobbin, Jared Braithwaite, Nathan Patterson and of course Gordon. The arrival of Ali and Van der Beek also shouldn't harm Gordon's minutes as they are typically deployed more centrally. The one issue for the Englishman is the arrival of Anwar El Ghazi, but Lampard's focus on young players and the fact that the transfer was completed before the arrival of the new manager tips the balance into Gordon's favour. Everton fans will be pleading with Lampard that Gordon continues to get minutes in the Premier League. The youngster still needs to improve his passing and he offers a minimal goal threat for a wide player. Yet the effusive and energetic style of Gordon's play and his masterful crossing ability seem tailor-made to serve Calvert-Lewin. If he maintains his recent form under Lampard, then Merseyside's Blue Phoenix will continue its ascent.